Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back into our beautiful sanctuary after several weeks away. I'm Rabbi Davidson with Cantor Glasman and Rabbi Sepaden. We welcome those of you who are here and those of you who are joining us at home, whether you are our members or our guests. We're grateful that you've chosen to begin Shabbat with us. And we do with the kindling of our Shabbat lights on page 15. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher krishanu bemitzvotam, Vetsivanu lehalikne, So yesterday, one of our congregants came to visit me, one who likes to ask big questions. She came and sat down and jumped right in. What does Judaism believe about the soul, she asked. And I responded, a tradition as long as ours doesn't speak with one voice about anything, and certainly not about matters so big as that. However, those voices do speak one common theme, that the soul is a gift to us from God, that it is placed within our bodies so that we might live lives of beauty and of meaning, and then in the course of time, it does return to its eternal source. Our liturgy speaks it this way, page five. The soul that you have given to me came pure from you. You have created it and formed it. You breathed it into me and within me you sustain it. At the appointed time, you will take it from this earth that I may enter into eternity. Yet while the breath of life is within me, I will worship you, creator of the universe. We praise you, our God, in whose hands are the souls of all the living and the spirits of all mortal beings. And so we begin this Sabbath Eve with those words of praise, the bottom of page four. Elohai neshama shenatata bi shenatata bi Elohai neshama shenatata bi shenatata bi tehorahi So now that you've heard some of it, we'd love to teach you this melody. Would you repeat after me? Elohai Neshama Elohai Once again, shenatata be put it together. Eloha neshama shenatata be shenata. One more time, Eloha neshama shenatata be shenatata be. Tehorahi. Give it a go. Tehorahi. Now 
Now a little lower. Listen to Horahi. And then it goes where you expect it. To Horahi. Now the English is after me. You created me. You shaped me. You breathed me into life. And it has a little fun melody. It goes like this. You created me. You shaped me. You breathed me into life. Try it. You created me. You shaped me. You breathed. You breathed me into life from the top. Elohai Neshama Shenatata Bi Shenatata Bi Elohai Neshama Shenatata Bi Shenatata Bi Tehorahi 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 You created me You created me You shaped me You breathed me into life You created me You shaped me You breathed me Page 18, Psalm 96, Shiru Ladonai. Shiru Ladonai, Shir Chadash, Shiru Ladonai. Golaretz Shiru Ladonai Barhu Shemo Basru Miyome Yom Yeshuato Sapru Bagoyim Kevodo Bechola Ami Miflota Page 43, we rise for our call to worship. Yeah. 
Ya la 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 seated and we read responsively days pass and the years vanish and we walk sightless among miracles God fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing let there be moments when your presence like lightning illumines the darkness in which we walk together help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed and we clay touched by God will reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder, how filled with awe is this place, and we did not know it. Be our inspiration in the tasks that confront us, both in seasons of joy and times of adversity. Send forth your light and your truth to lead us. When doubt and confusion assail us, help us remain constant in our devotion to you. Deepen Deepen our loyalty loyalty to the the sacred sacred obligations which rest upon us, May our hearts never turn away from that covenant and let our lives ever testify to our faith in you. Again, we stand and together we say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt speak of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, who led you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. What does it mean to be a Jew? You shall be holy in the face of the many to stand for the one in the presence of fragments to make them whole. What does it mean to be a Jew? You shall be a holy people, to hold fast to our vision of truth, to retain our faith in tomorrow. Holy in our past is the memory of redemption from Egyptian bondage. Holy in our day is the hope of redemption we still await. Twice holy in our past are those who gave their lives to hallow this world, Holy is the Jew, today and tomorrow, who bears witness to the goodness of life. And holy are those whose lives are songs in freedom's cause. 
מי כמוך פעילים אדוני מי כמוך נעדר בקודש נורא תהילות עושה פלא נורא תהילות עושה פלא As the Sabbath descends, it enfolds us in its mantle of peace. It brings to us the precious gift of time, time to embrace family and friends, to reflect more deeply on the meaning and purpose of our lives, and to worship in the beauty of holiness. May every Shabbat be for us a sanctuary of love and devotion, bringing contentment to our hearts, happiness to our homes, and blessings to our people. Infinite is your power, O God. Great is your gift of life. In loving kindness, you sustain the world. Through the endless flow of your blessings, you preserve all of creation. You uphold the falling and heal the sick. Free the captive and keep faith with your people in death as in life. Who is like you, author of life and death? 
We praise you, God, the source of eternal life. God of ages past and future, God of this day, as you were with our ancestors, be with us as well. As you strengthen them, strengthen us. As you were their guide, be ours as well. Grant that we too may be bearers of your teaching, teachers of your truth. Then our tradition shall endure and our people Israel will live from mother and father to daughter and son and all who follow them. One generation comes, one generation passes. Each of us is a link in the endless chain of our heritage. Students of the Torah become teachers. Our faith and our ideals endure. Our people and our values live on. Le Tor Vador, Le Tor Vador, Le Tor Vador, Le Kid God Lecha, Le Netzach Netzachim, Le Netzach Netzachim, Kedushat Hadakti. Le Torvador, Le Torvador, Nagid God Lecha, Le Netzach Netzachim, Le Netzach Netzachim, Kedushat Hanakdish, Peshit Shabbatot after Tisha B'Av are known in our tradition as the Sabbaths of Consolation. Tisha B'Av, which we observed on Sunday, recalls the destruction of the temple. The Haftarot that are read on Sabbath mornings following Tisha B'Av promise restoration, rebuilding, the prophets declare to the people that even after the tragedy, the brokenness that they had known, they will in time return whole again to the promised land. This Shabbat in particular is known as Shabbat Nachamu, the Sabbath of comfort. Just as it is so for our people, perhaps so it can be for each of us. For so many of us are feeling that sense of brokenness, or there are people we care about who are struggling with misfortune. Tonight we pray for wholeness, for healing. If there are people of whom you're thinking, praying, perhaps yourself, we invite you to share 
those names aloud now so that they can be woven into the fabric of our prayers. Nani Gerber. We turn to our healing prayer, our Misha Berach, page 84.
Shabbat Shalom. As we finish out this week of truly outrageous news, many of us find ourselves asking the question, does anything shock us anymore? Are we stunned by any manner of vile behavior? Or are we living in a world so inundated with corruption and fraud, exploitation and lies that these offenses barely register? These last few days, we've been deluged with the outsized drama concerning former President Trump, the FBI, and the New York Attorney General even as he's navigating several other investigations for issues like wire fraud, election tampering, and defamation to name but a few. A few days before that news broke, we bore witness to the defamation trial against Alex Jones, whose sickening lies and disinformation about Sandy Hook continued even through his court proceedings. The list of utterly appalling events could go on. Our news cycle is full of them, so full that we are no longer surprised by what we see or hear. We may be weary or disgusted or even outraged, but we're not surprised. It's all become so par for the course and, dare I say, normalized. Sadly, we've come to expect such behavior from our politicians, our pundits, our celebrities, and well, everybody, because this is just where society is right now, right? Well, maybe. But Judaism has never been a religion of resignation or blind acceptance of the status quo. It has always been rooted in action, indeed, in movement towards a better, more righteous future. And as Jews, it is incumbent upon us to push back against this acquiescence, against this feeling that life simply is what it is, and that's that. My teacher, Rav Yitz Greenberg, reminds us, Judaism is the religion of tikkun olam. Its most revolutionary claim is that this world is a creation intended to, by its creator to be made into a paradise. Yes, this world is meant to be a paradise. And this paradise is a world of dignity and equality and health for all. It is a world without oppression, without baseless hatred, without violence or war. But this messianic vision of a harmonious world will only be brought into being through a covenant a partnership between God and humanity. We are essential players in the remaking of our world. It cannot happen without us. This week, we read the second portion in the book of Deuteronomy called Va'et Hanan. In it, we recall some of the greatest hits of Israelite history, like the exodus from Egypt and the giving of Torah at Sinai. We also get a repetition of the Ten Commandments, and we even hear the Shema. Woven into these texts is a firm emphasis on this idea of covenant. We hear in several iterations, our God made a covenant with us. Take care then not to forget the covenant. God will not forget the covenant made on oath with your parents. What we learn again and again is that our partnership, our covenant with God is at the very center of our faith. We must uphold our end of the agreement and God will do so in return. It's a two-way street. It always has been, 
and it always will be. But what exactly is our role in this covenant? Rav Greenberg offers a very compelling answer by way of laying out three eras of Jewish history and three corresponding models of covenant. In the biblical era, God played a very outsized role in this covenant. God speaks from heaven, God intervenes regularly, and God openly pulls the strings of history. That's the first era. In the second era, during the time of our rabbis, the covenant looks a little different. Here, God self-limits, becoming more hidden, operating more in the natural rather than the supernatural. Humanity becomes a more equal partner with God in the work of repairing the world. But it is the third era, our contemporary world, where the covenantal balance switches dramatically. And this is a crucial piece of Rav Greenberg's teaching. In this third era, our time, God is totally hidden, not absent, but unseen. And we, humanity, have been given full responsibility to live out the Jewish mission. We are at the helm. We are the decision makers, the planners, the visionaries. And while there are no Red Seas parting in our world, there are more miracles than ever, but they are manifest through human ingenuity. We see miracles in modern medical breakthroughs like vaccines, organ transplants, through amazing feats of technology, through agricultural and ecological innovations. And God is present everywhere, but God's presence must be uncovered and discovered and experienced. As my colleague Rabbi Jen Schlossberg explains, over time, God has become more hidden in our lives, and that increases the need for a more human role in creating change in this world. For better or for worse, in this day and age, we are now what Rav Greenberg calls the managing partners in this covenant with God. God has made room for us to lead the charge in the mending of our society. We are responsible for rolling out God's vision of paradise here on earth, for ensuring that this world will be better and more perfect for the next generation and beyond. Given our role here as managing partner, we have no choice but to engage in the world around us. We have no choice but to speak out when we see injustice or immorality. We have no choice but to stand up for the marginalized, to act for the good and the righteous and the moral because it is on us. And if we don't strive to make this world kinder or gentler or more compassionate, who will. There are no miraculous interventions that will suddenly save us from ourselves. There are no plagues that God can send that will set the oppressed among us free. God may be ever-present in this world, but we, we are now charged with fulfilling God's mission. We are the instruments of redemption here on earth. We are the translators of our Torah, too. And we must carry this covenant forward in order to build that better world. In a most extraordinary move, God has contracted to make room for us so that we may step into our fullest selves and realize our fullest potential to do good to pursue justice 
and to inspire meaningful change. The privilege of this opportunity is as monumental as the responsibility. For we have been entrusted by God to do God's work of repair all around us. The power is in our hands, and the purpose and vision are here in our Torah. It's on us now to realize that vision, no matter how hard it may be or how unrealistic it may seem, especially as we look out onto our very broken world, a world full of corruption and lies, violence, and cruelty. We must hold on to our essential purpose, our sacred responsibility. Tikkun Olam. Rav Greenberg writes, the perfect world can be reached only by an endless chain of human effort. The actions of one people or any single generation are not enough. The Jews were charged with the mission of being the vanguard of humanity as it walks through history towards the messianic end goal. By their acceptance of the Torah, the Jews promised not to settle or stop short of that goal. This is the Jewish covenant. Can you hear that zone? Shabbat shalom. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
אנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים. Page 140. Where there are ignorance and superstition, let, let there, there be, be enlightenment, enlightenment and, and knowledge. knowledge. Where there are prejudice and hatred, let there, let there be, be acceptance, acceptance and, and love. love. Where there are fear and suspicion, let there be confidence and trust. Where there are tyranny and oppression, let there be freedom and justice. Where there are poverty and disease, let there be prosperity and health. Where there are strife and discord, let there be harmony and peace. Page 143, it is a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be, to be an O oh, to lose, a thing for fools this and a holy thing, a holy thing to love, for your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. Turn our thoughts now to those who are no longer with us, our beloved ones who have entered into the gates of eternity during this past week, and those who were taken from us at this time during seasons past. On this Shabbat, we lovingly remember Arthur Abeles, Lillian Edelman, Sylvia Arnowich, Ruth Bachrock, Edward Ronald Baer, Harold Bernstein, Beatrice Bograd, Arnold Kenneth Brody, Alexandra Morgan Ciardi, Bertram J. Cohn, Margot Collins, Barbara Zorinsky Faden, Sarah Friedlander, Sarah Zox Friedman, Rose Frimmett, Florence R. Garfunkel, Sidney Goodstein, Betty Gutag, Robert Charles Hankey, Jewel Lyon Janover, Leonora Jollis, Linda Carlin, Herbert Karp, Arthur P. Levy, Bernard Levy, Susan Lowenheim, Martin Lorber, Joan Linton, Ruth Miles, Peter Moore, Susan Newhouse, Joseph Roth, Marilyn Joy Samuels, Sheila Sarnoff, Max Schwartz, Gladys Singer, Helen Sonnenberg Tucker, Kurt Williams. We invite those of you who are in recent mourning to please rise. Those of you now who are observing a yard site, the anniversary of a beloved one's passing, we invite you to rise. And now we rise together as one congregational community to say the words of our Kaddish prayer on page 145. 
Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash shemei rabba be'alma divarach hirute v'amlich malchute b'chayachon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol be'it Yisrael b'agala u'vizman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevarach le'alam u'lalmei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase V'yitadar, v'yitale, v'yitalal, sh'me d'kudsha, b'richu. L'eila min kol b'irchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechemata, d'amiran v'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehei shalama rabba min sh'maya, v'chayim aleinu v'al ko Yisrael, v'imru. Amen. O se shalom b'imromav, hu ya'a se shalom, aleinu v'al ko Yisrael, Vimru. Amen. May the source of peace on high send peace and comfort to all of you who are in mourning, solace to any of you who may be bereaved at this time. And together we say, Amen. You may be seated. Shabbat Shalom once again. What a joy it has been to share in this Shabbat service with all of you, whether you're online or whether you're here with us in our sanctuary. As always, Temple Emmanuel is a house of prayer for all people, and all who would gather with us in peace are most welcome in this house of God. A few announcements for the upcoming week. First, our Shabbat worship continues tomorrow with our morning service at 10.30 a.m. And tomorrow at 6 p.m., our young families will be hosting a pre-sunset picnic on the main beach in East Hampton, if you happen to be out in the Hamptons. Sunday at 11, we've got Stitch in Time. Tuesday at 9.30, our meditation circle and Thursday at 9, our support group for the DeRote generation. As always, tune in Sunday through Thursday at 5.30 for our daily sunset service. For more information about so many exciting upcoming events like the High Holy Days and our new Stryker Center classes, please visit our website, emmanuelnyc.org. And finally, for those of you who are here in our sanctuary, we ask that you kindly leave your prayer books on your seats as you go. We now turn to page 147 as we continue with our Kiddush and our Motzi. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher k'rishonu b'mitzvotav ratzavanu, V'shabat kohotcho b'ahava u'v'ratzon hinchilanu, Zikaron l'mahase v'reishit, Ki hu yom tefila l'mikra, Baruch Atah Adonai Mekah 
Our concluding song this evening will be Psalm 150, hallelujah, page 102. We invite you to rise and join us. Shabbat full of peace.
Thank you.